over 12 days. So just to give you an idea, Shanghai is the East Coast. Um, it's the most densely populated city in the world. Um, then to go on from that, I'll just talk about the workshop that we were there for first. So the workshop was for regenerating um, a housing unit in Shashi, which is a canal town 80 kilometers outside of Shanghai. Um, it's a very poor town. Um, the structures are all very old. So the typical housing units were um, in bays of three meters. So that's what we were um, dealing with. So the aim of the project was basically um, kind of intercultural ideas and swapping the ideas. So we were put into groups, and in each group there was two Chinese students and two Irish students. And that was the group we worked in for the design process. And basically we started off by, in Shanghai, we looked at prototype design houses. And we went from there, kind of looking at background knowledge to, to see um, what we could do. So um, it worked in uh, two different categories. So first of all, was strategy and analysis. So we went to Shashi, we did um, survey drawings, um, and then just analytical studies of the houses, their functions, and what the houses were used for. And then when we went back to Shanghai, we looked at uh, concepts and designs for a new prototype housing that could be used uh, throughout the compound, which we were looking at. So before we went on to Shashi to do the design studio, we did a bit of exploring around Shanghai. So I'll just show you um, some of the things we did. So firstly was the Bund, which is um, located on the Huangpu River. It's basically the financial district of Shanghai. It's the main tourist attraction in Shanghai. Um, I describe it as a massive Times Square. It's absolutely just full of people. There's lights everywhere. It's really overwhelming. I think this is the one place in Shanghai where you could really see how densely populated the city was. There was just people absolutely everywhere. So then, uh, the next morning then, we went to um, the Urban Planning Exhibition Centre, which was absolutely amazing. And on the top floor of the centre, um, the whole floor was covered in this model, which was the entire city of Shanghai. You could see it kind of vary from having a light display, just being the model. And we were told that um, when the model was first built, people came um, to see the model, to see if their house was on it, because if their house was not, it, then the government were going to knock it down and build something else. So that's how they did. So, um, as well as this massive model, uh, there was also kind of unusual stuff in the exhibition centre, such as this kind of um, mesh artwork of a baby, which we thought was kind of unusual. And I even found a drawing that was done from an artist from Ireland, so well, that's kind of nice that I spotted that. Uh, this then is just a view from the exhibition centre onto People's Square. You can see the financial district looks a lot different by day, it's a lot more boring. So then, these are just kind of some photos, sorry it's very dark, um, some photos through the streets of Shanghai. As you can see, um, it's very Western American looking. Um, a, lot of, a lot of it you kind of stand, you would, could be anywhere in the world. Um, it wasn't until kind of once you turn a corner and you come into the old town, you could see the original um, Chinese architecture, which you then associate with Shanghai, and then the sort of fusing of the 21st century with the old town. So within these blocks, um, you kind of walk through an archway and you come into a completely different world. So inside is these amazing, um, just like man-made lakes um, surrounding some of the, the houses. And this is outside the New Garden Museum, which I'll show you now. So, the, um, from studying the, the uh, housing design, we were told that the three main um, features in Chinese housing were, was water, mountain, and dwelling. So you can see that in the landscape, they try to um, kind of have these like mountain, and then the water, and then the dwellings in between. And they were the three key things that they needed. And you can see the, the bridges along here. They said that all the bridges were zigzag so that when you walked across that ghosts couldn't follow you, which is kind of interesting. So then these are just some more photos out within the Yukon. Pretty amazing there. So then this is outside the Gardens again. This is the U Market. Um, so it's a really nice um, bustling market space. And this is just looking at the, sorry, the really dark in the this is um, look, just looking at the market space and then the, the Shanghai Tower in the background, you can see. So then uh, we went over to the financial district, uh, looking at the um, Shanghai Tower and the financial centre, which used to call the ball over there, for obvious reasons you can see. And then this is a photo 
photo from the top of the, the tower. Um, one of the boys from OCC did this collage from uh, just over the space of about an hour. So then we went on to the Lee Long houses, which were a housing prototype that was um, one of the first prototypes in Shanghai. So these houses are three to four stories, and you can just see they have a courtyard just as you come into the house. Um, the, you can see that the space are quite tight, there's a lot of overhead cables, and there's not a lot of space. Um, these are kind of alleyways outside the house, as you can see. And we were told that this is actually quite a lot of um, space for housing in Shanghai, uh, which is kind of hard to wrap your head around because it is really tight, and this is actually a really expensive area to live in as well. Um, it's just some uh, scaffolding and uh, bamboo thing that was just resting on the floor, which is really uneasy to, to look at, but the builders didn't seem to mind. Um, so next is Jin Tian Di, which is um, a square in the upmarket area of Shanghai. It was originally just um, a straight road and basically they picked, plucked up the buildings, uh, carved out a square and put the facades back on the edges of the square. Um, you can see yeah, these houses here to create this, um, this square with all these kind of restaurants. It's a really nice um, upmarket square, um, really successful um, design change. So then this is Tian Ji Fan, which is also known as Li Long Tu which is not being used really for residential anymore, it's more a market space of restaurants and bars. <coughs> so then, um, going on to the university itself, the Tongji University, um, within it there's the College of Architecture and Urban Planning. So there's 3,000 students in the, this college, um, in the university. Uh, these are the five buildings for architecture. You can see them out there here. Um, so it's 3,000 students, there's four undergraduate programs, five postgraduate programs and five doctorates. So they study a range of things from architecture, urban planning, landscape design, industrial design, historic building, protection engineering. And in first year they're all put in together and then they branch out into their different courses. So the building that we were mainly in is building C. Um, this was the lectures and postgrad building and there's just um, an image of the front of the building. And we were told that the building was actually designed by a past pupil of Tongji University, which is really nice. Um, these are just some views then from the building out onto the, the campus. So some of the projects that were going on, um, they had these bridging structures uh, in the front of the building. So you could kind of see through the photos that they have their models displayed everywhere. They were really proud of their models, but we weren't quite sure whether they were being put on display for us to see or if they actually had them there the whole time. So some of the spaces inside, uh, you can see they have models everywhere, they have a lot of storage for models too. So as I said in first year they do, they, they all come together and mainly they work on models and just exploring art, um, there's no real design. Uh, so it's all these kind of really fonts you can see here, just uh, shells and shells of this. And then these are some of the models that they did with the, with the 3D printers. Um, so some of the other programs that they had, which are really nice that I just want to talk about, was um, for two weeks during the summer they used to go to, they used to pick a certain location and they used to go and sketch and do um, hand, a lot of hand rendering, um, just all, uh, it's all done by hand, just really nice sketching. Um, so they pick a different place every year and they go and in detail, they'd sketch these amazing drawings and they just had rooms completely full of all these sketches. Um, another one of the programs was they went to France for three months and did landscape art. So they really got um, a really um, wide like, range of education um, throughout the university. Um, one of the other things that I was really envious of them is that they had a green room for their models. So you can see there's a lot of technology there, massive cameras and everything. So something to think about that maybe. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, just finished with the university. I think my favourite thing about the university was um, in the atrium of the lecture building, they had a grand piano, which um, during the day different students used to play. So we were in the morning, you kind of hear people, uh, beginners, practicing and getting lessons. But, but by about 12 o'clock, they were all grade 8 concert pianists playing. It was absolutely amazing. You could be heard throughout the whole building. It was just such a nice experience when you're like working away um, on CAD, whatever, all day long. and. You can just hear this music filtering through the building, it's a really nice feature, and that's me playing. Um, so then on to uh, Su Chao, which was 
um, another city that's outside, about, I think it's 80 kilometers, out, oh no, sorry, it's 140 kilometers outside of um, Shanghai, with a population of 14 million. So because of the urban sprawl through, throughout Suzhou and Shanghai, the two cities have nearly amalgamated together so that there's actually no um, kind of rural or suburban land between them. They're just completely joined into one. So in Suzhou, which is the home of IMA, we went to see his museum, which was his last, um, his last project that he did. And these are just some shots from inside the main atrium of his museum. Um, and this is this grand staircase. In the museum, I think it was a um, traditional Chinese <coughs> but I didn't, we weren't really paying a lot of attention to the, the artifacts, to be honest. Um, so then, this is the museum and also looking at the Su Chao Gardens, which was right next door. Um, the Su Chao Gardens are <coughs> fairly similar looking to the new gardens that I've already showed you, so I'm sure you much about this. It was just one really nice thing that we saw was in one of the buildings, the, there was a glass and every second pane was clear and then blue, clear blue. And as you can kind of see from the, the blue um, on the roof, basically what was used for is during the summer when it's really hot, you can see on the roof of the building it looks like snow, and they used to look out and they'd see the snow on the, like what looked like snow on the roof and on the trees, and it kind of cool them down by thinking they were looking at snow. So that's really nice. Um, so then on to Sha Chi, which was our site. Uh, this is the canal town with a population of about one million years old which to them was a really small town, which to us is Dublin, so it's uh, quite a big difference. So the Tong Tian Tea House, this was our studio for the few days that we were in Shashi. So we used this for our um, lectures, for our presentations, and just for design meetings. So the street that we were working on was 1,000 years, years old, and the houses ranged from 200 to 50 years old on the street. Um, one really nice thing about the street was it had this the paving on the street. It was really subtle, but you could see that um, the paving is on the, So this is the main strip that's used for people to walk on, and then the one the lower one is for walking into people's houses, and then the third one is just the kind of buffer space in between. And it was, although it was really subtle, like there was no level change or anything, people actually used to stick to the different pavings when they were walking on the street. So it was really interesting to watch the people stopped it subconsciously because there was nothing, like there was no barrier actually dividing it. It's just a, a nice aspect of the street. Um, so this is just another image. The house here is the tea house that we were studying and our site is just a few doors down. This is, um, this building here is the back of our site. You can see the kind of um, steps themselves made to come down to the water. Um, so just some images from inside the houses. Um, as you can see, it's very cluttered. There's not a lot of order. Um, Chennai just had stuff absolutely everywhere. You can imagine the houses being three meters wide. There wasn't a lot of space, but they really filled the space as much as they could with all their storage. It was like they'd never thrown out anything they've ever had. So some people, uh, because of this, were actually forced to move their kitchens outside to their courtyard. So this um, lady here is out in her courtyard making, her, preparing her dinner. You can even see like underneath the table and under the sink, they just had stuff absolutely everywhere. Um, and these are just some more images of the houses. So these are the corridors into the courtyards. So just on to a bit about our project. So this is our the site. So this is the bridge where the photo was taken from. So this is our site here, and this is the street that I showed you a few minutes ago. So the building is divided into two parts with the courtyard in the centre, so each part is two storeys. Um, so these are just some, in the first stage um, we had, so we went to our site on the Friday and did site survey on Friday evening, so then Saturday was just drawing up kind of these quick sketches, drawing up what we had seen and doing some quick analysis and then Sunday we were presenting this in the tea house. So these are just some of the drawings that we had um, just one day to kind of sketch out ourselves. So. Um, this is again just another one of the section. This is the plan. So this is the street here, and these are the three meter bays you can see. And as you can see in this instance, the house is actually pushed into the, the back of the other bay. So originally all the houses would have been one bay per family, but as some families grew and other families left, people started occupying other spaces. So what, be, what was once very, um, very simple, um, 
like design if they completely tangled and it was actually a lot more interesting now when you kind of look at the ownership between the different houses. So this is just another study of the, our house. So the front of our house here um, is a workshop <coughs> uh, for a man who is uh, he used to repair bikes and different kind of small electronics. Um, the second part back here that had um, occupied the the next bay. This is for an elderly couple, and then the third was um, a young couple with a young son. So you can see by just this kind of circulation diagram that they don't actually overlap a lot. And one of the things we were told to look at was integration of the families within the housing because they have to share the courtyard as their kind of main space. But you can see here that they didn't, they don't use it a lot. And um, so the next one you'll see. So this is just a study did of the courtyard and just drawing the everything that was in it, kind of looking at the function to see what it was used for. And as you can see that a lot of things are just thrown in, they're kind of junk, they're not using anything. And you could see pretty much straight away that the space wasn't being used. No one was sitting out there using it as open space. They weren't communicating, but there was, it wasn't um, used as a meeting point. It was literally just, if you didn't have room in your house, just throw it out, pour it out, there's some extra space. There's even a sink here, but it just wasn't used, it was just completely covered. So you could see straight away that they weren't using the space, even though they had so little space, they still weren't using it properly. Um, so then, uh, that was the first stage of the analysis. Then uh, we went back to Shanghai, and this is just um, a photo of us working in the Tongji back in the university. And so basically, we had done the start of the site analysis, and then we kind of split into two groups. So myself and Canoe, was his um, Western name, I don't know why, um, that's the guy sitting beside me, and Wong and Sean, who's behind him, that was our group. So we decided to split, and myself and Canoe continued with analysis, doing further analysis into the site, while Wong and Sean decided to go and start doing the design prototype. Um, so this is just, uh, so that was uh, Monday night, I think. Yes, yeah, so this is all day Monday and then Tuesday was our final presentation. So then these are just some of the site analysis drawings that myself and um, Canoe did for the, the next presentation. So um, just like we drew up proper sections um, of the site. These are some of Canoe's um, amazing sketches of the canal, the courtyard and the street, just getting a bit of an atmospheric feel for the different spaces. Um, this is the plan of the so this is just um, studying the, the front of the house and how you enter. So this is the, uh, the front elevation of the house on the street. So what kind of caught me straight away was that when you look at the house, you think it's completely closed off um, to the public. There's no kind of way of penetrating it. And then you swing open the door, and then it's kind of like you're brought into a different world beyond. And it's kind of this idea of like progressing through the building. I think it was really nice because you didn't really know what was going to come next. And then you walked into what was then the courtyard. So um, from studying the courtyard kind of analytically um, and everything in it and looking at the space and how it was used or how it was not used, I wanted to look at a space in the building that was actually still as full of clutter but was actually a used space. So then I went on to the next drawing which is of the kitchen. Um, so this space, which had equally had so much stuff in it, I started to draw it out and tease out to see if there was any order among the chaos. And I actually found that there was to an extent that the stuff had, had a place, even though there was a lot of it, they all had their particular place to be. And it was just interesting comparing the two because um, at first glance, you kind of walk into the room and say, whoa, how did anybody live here? Because it was just a mess. But then when you started to draw it and tease it out, you could see that it actually had a lot more order than um, you first think. So just on from that, these are just some of the concepts, sketches, ideas that we had um, that kind of led into Wong and Sean's uh, part of the project. So this is just looking at the, the idea of the unity. Um, this is looking at the courtyard space and uh, just kind of trying to manipulate the, the view from here and the connection has with this side here. So this idea of maybe dividing the houses diagonally it's just one of the kind of thoughts we had because only if I say this part and this part, you'd have a connection with both the canal and the street, and also to get from one to the other, you'd have to use the courtyard as a 
for circulation space. So it was all about trying to kind of increase circulation and integration throughout the between the different families. So that was the end of myself and Camille's presentation. So then just to to finish this presentation, I just said I'd um, show just one or two slides on the food and culture because this is kind of the question that I was asked by most people when I came home. What was the food like? So first of all, it's not like the Chinese you get in Ireland. Um, it's, so you sit down, you have the lazy Susan, that's what we call them, in the centre of the table, there was all chopsticks, there was no chance of getting a fork or a spoon. So straight away we were one kindly of taught us all how to use the chopsticks. Um, so the food is brought out plate by plate. We never actually ordered anything, it was just put in front of you and you had to um, eat it. You kind of politely tried to ask what it was first. Um, if, if you could, but sometimes they wouldn't tell you because they just wanted you to try it. There was a lot of tofu, um, is what I found, um, which wasn't very nice. Um, the dishes were very spicy a lot of the time. Um, so, anyway, this is us um, using our skill of chopsticks, eating some dumplings. This is in the new market, which we were told was uh, this dumpling sandwich, which we were told was the best dumplings in Shanghai. Um, they were really good, actually. So these are just some of the dishes. So we used to call this eyeball soup because it was mini dumplings with black seeds. They look like eyeballs. Um, these are some of the really spicy dishes that you get. You have to be careful. And um, then uh, some, a lot of the dishes were kind of a watery broth, but some of them were so spicy that um, you couldn't actually eat the the water in the soup. You'd have to just take out the stuff and. Uh, filter out because it was so hard it would like make your eyes tear. So that was kind of a warning signal to us. I was like, I think I'll stay away from that. Um, another um, experience we had was the hot pot, which was um, basically a sink in the middle of the table with boiling water, and you order the food raw and you throw it in yourself. So this is really nice for the Chinese students who, or the tiny people who could use the chopsticks, so we could put their food in, cook it, take it back out. Whereas we were an absolute mess, just like all like fighting each other for whatever food we could grab out with our chopsticks. Um, this is where we were introduced to pig intestine, and um, I said no straight away. But one of the lads was daring enough to try it, and um, he said it tasted like what you'd imagine an intestine would taste like. <laughs> so, I'll leave it at that. And then to just to finish up, um, this is a delicacy that they they gave us um, one night, and I'll. I'll leave it up to you to guess whether it tastes good or not. <laughs> yeah, I'll, just, I'll leave it at that. So um, thank you everyone, uh, hope you enjoyed that. And I'd just like to say a special thank you to Saul, the ORI, uh, Tom G and Jan and Mehmet and everyone just for giving me this amazing opportunity and I hope you liked the presentation.
literature at Toji and in Shanghai also. Um, and there was people from uh, UCD and BIT and WIT and the RIAI. And we met, uh, for example, you know, some of the people that I saw in your book in your photographs uh, you know, were there. And they came over here then in... Um, I think it was just um, October we just got. It wasn't this past year. It was definitely just this past year. Well, we went over there in it was October of um, 2012. So it would be. And then they came here last, last spring, I think it was. So it was a well, that that thing. Yeah. It was just that we were kind of getting it from the students just telling us what they were so, so. Yeah, yeah. But what's interesting is that they want to. So this, this whole thing kind of is a bit of a, an experiment, really. And, and it was done quite. The RIAI was, let's say, driving it and sponsoring it. The schools were sort of, you know, effectively going along to see what would happen. And this charrette, this design uh, charrette, came up with this idea of this kind of combined studio, um, was something that the Chinese composed to us. Um, and to be honest, it came up a little bit. It wasn't planned enough in advance to really integrate it into the into anything else that was going on. Um, so, but on the other hand, I think that it's very much indicative of how they work um, and how we work. And in fact, you know, the fact that all of the Irish schools were able to kind of participate in the this was quite good. And as Laura said, they're going to come over here. And in a way, the hospitality that, you know, you guys were shown is something that we now have to, let's say, we're obliged to reciprocate, which I think is quite nice. Um, so this thing that will happen in late August, early September is something that hopefully can be developed. Um, and maybe there won't be chicken feet, but whatever the Irish equipment is. We were trying to brainstorm what was the worst Irish food to try and feed them. So if anyone has any ideas. <laughs> Bring them to Supermax. <laughs>
how fast and enthusiastic they are about it, but then you have to pull back and say, hold on, like I need a concept to, to drive this. Whereas I think they didn't really see it like that. Like they were kind of, when they saw that we were doing these like analytical drawings and some of the ones I did at the courtyard, um, Canoe kept asking me, he's like, what are you trying to get from this? What, what are you doing this drawing for? And I was kind of, you know, I didn't really know what the start, I was just wanted to study the space. And he was kind of, oh, I didn't really, I never looked at it like that. And they kind of would just kind of jump for design, as I said, so that was the difference. I think that was one of the more striking kind of observations for me, also kind of throughout. Um, you, you see this vast scale of building and construction going on, kind of, uh, kind of at, at, a, at a scale and extent and dimension that kind of pays no attention to what is. So kind of this mindset of kind of looking at the context and establishing what's there first kind of is totally over, overwritten by kind of the majority of construction that's going on at, at the moment. And so that to introduce a mindset that pays attention to even orientation and climate um, is something that's only coming back. And in a way, um, that's something that kind of drove this workshop. Um, because I have a sense there's, a, there's an ambivalence also in the, in the college and in the, in the teaching staff. So kind of on one side, you're kind of participating in this huge development drive. And on the other side, you're also kind of critical um, about that, kind of balancing that, sort of wondering if that's going the right way. And uh, my sense is that not the college was divided, but even kind of individual professors and lecturers that we talked to were kind of ambivalent about their position. Um, and if you get to and, and drive to study even kind of traditional building types was um, was driven by kind of in, an, un, an unconscious desire, or kind of, kind of probably conscious desire today, to rediscover and regain some of the kind of traditional awareness of response to society, response to climate that had been sort of ignored in the, uh, in the vast last year of construction that's been kind of happening over the past year. So kind of to regain some of that knowledge and use it more productively. So kind of those those are the kind of tendencies behind this kind of workshop that was is my perception. Do you think that um, when they're con continuing the projects that you started off, they look at many scales of the project like when they start looking at how it's made for the joint or remember you said that there was different um, like there's a lot of painting as well in first year that they do, like do they look at things in different mediums and scales? Or is that one part of the school when you're in that discipline? Yeah, I think I think it's kind of double point divide. From what I got from it anyway, um, these were the students that we were working with were postgrad students. So they finished their degree in architecture and they were in their first year postgrad. Um, just from what I saw from the way they worked, it I don't know, maybe they later go into it, but they seem to literally like a day, in one day they'd have a complete design done and a scheduled model and they'd have like sections that would be taken from that so I don't know then later if they went like they jumped in and out of scale but to me it seemed like they were staying kind of at the one scale like I didn't, I never really saw them kind of zoom out looking at side context um, in, in this instance I, I can't really say for all of it but in this project anyway it just seemed like it was design, design, sketchup models that was how they were working, there was no like, I didn't say any joint materiality, uh, joint detail materiality. I didn't see that yet anyway, but then again it was only four days, so. Is that it? Well, thank you so much for that talk. That was really interesting. <coughs> so.